For the past several months, it was a foregone conclusion that Georgia would pull together 2024's number one recruiting class. But Larry Johnson just made things a whole lot more interesting, as Justin Scott's commitment to the Buckeyes means Ohio State now has the most five-star recruits out of any team in the country, and they now have the highest average rank per recruit in the country, which means they have the best quality recruiting class. Right now, Georgia has the best overall recruiting class. They have 22 commits, three five-stars, 12 four-stars, and seven three-stars, and they have an average rank per recruit of a 93.2. They have the third highest quality recruiting class behind Alabama at number two and Ohio State at number one. Ohio State's only behind Georgia in recruiting class rankings because they have five less commits. They have four five-stars, 11 four-stars, and two three-stars. And it looks like Ohio State could be adding several more five-stars and four-stars along the way. So the race for the number one recruiting class of the 2024 cycle is far from over. And if you're an Ohio State fan, you can thank Larry Johnson, Brian Hartline, and Ryan Day for an excellent recruiting job that they have done. As a Michigan fan, it saddens me that Justin Scott, who was one of the few five-star prospects Michigan had a real chance of landing, committed to Ohio State, but Michigan's recruiting class itself is far from done. They only have 24 commits, but I stated in a video talking about Michigan and Big Ten recruiting overall that I think the Wolverines are going to try and get as many commits as possible because the team will likely suffer heavy attrition after what I think is going to be a very successful 2023 season. Most of Michigan's starters are draft eligible and or will run out of eligibility when the 2023 season concludes. And I think for many of the players on the Wolverines roster, their draft stock is going to be as high as it can be after 2023 where I have Michigan as my number one team, and I think the Wolverines are winning the national championship. But Ohio State, long-term, is recruiting better, and I think if Michigan isn't the team to win it all, it's certainly Ohio State. And Ohio State is recruiting like a team who is coming off a national championship victory. That's how they're recruiting. Georgia, they're coming off two seasons in a row where they've captured the national championship, Georgia's coming also off of two seasons in a row where they've put the most NFL draft picks. They've got the most NFL draft picks, most in the first round also, which is a very important thing to note. Several first rounders, both in the 2022 and 2023 NFL draft. Same with Ohio State. And right now, I think the race for the number one class is between Georgia and Ohio State especially, but we shouldn't count out Florida. We shouldn't count out Alabama, who even though they have the 22nd recruiting class, they only have 10 commits, and we all know that Nick Saban is going to rack up those five- and four-star commits starting in just a few months. Alabama typically joins the recruiting class frenzy late and always hits it well. Michigan, USC, these teams that are in the top five, I'd say mostly because of their lack of five-star prospects and or commits. I don't see how they could have the number one recruiting class, but they have a better chance than any other program who I haven't and will not mention in this video. But certainly Georgia and Ohio State are up there because they're top three in quality and they're top two in quantity and overall rankings for recruiting as well. Ohio State also has a top 10 recruiter, and Brian Hartline, who's sixth according to 24-7 Sports. Georgia has the number one recruiter, Fran Brown, according to the 2024 recruiter rankings. Focusing on Ohio State, what made Justin Scott, who's a, a five-star defensive tackle, what made him come to Ohio State instead of Michigan, it was a race between Ohio State and Michigan, it was Larry Johnson. And the 6'4", 310-pound defensive tackle, number three defensive lineman, number 14th player in the country. He was crystal balled to Miami and Notre Dame, committed out of the blue yesterday evening. 
And Larry Johnson is the reason he committed. He took an official visit to Michigan June 9th, and him and his family, to him, seemed like that everyone was on board with the Wolverines. Michigan's primary recruiter for Justin Scott was Mike Elston, and also Sharon Moore was recruiting Scott as well for 24-7 sports. So Michigan was sending the best of the best to court Scott, and at the end of the day, when Scott took his final summer visit to the Buckeyes June 23rd, Larry Johnson gave him reassurance. Johnson, we all know, has been the best of the best over the past decade at developing defensive line prospects and also at recruiting defensive line prospects. In the 2020, 2021, and 2022 seasons, we have not seen an, an alpha-dominant edge rusher emerge from Ohio State, but JT Tuimolau showed against Penn State last season that certainly there is talent on the defensive line and also that with him returning in 2023, if he has a breakout season, that will just confirm that Larry Johnson hasn't fallen off, hasn't stopped. And before he came, before he came to Ohio State, he was a defensive coach at Penn State for years, and he left there because he kept getting passed up for the defensive coordinator and head coach positions. But he's been at Ohio State since 2014, and he is a huge reason why Ohio State has had great trench play for most of the years that he's been there. He's been a big reason why Ohio State recruits and develops at an elite level. Think of the Bosa brothers, think of Chase Young, think of guys like Sam Hubbard, Zach Harrison, JT Tui Molau, and, and Jack Sawyer, who are currently on the roster. The reason Tui Molau did what he did against Penn State, no doubt, is because of what Larry Johnson does as a defensive line coach. He's amazing at his job, and as long as Ohio State has him, even if the development falls off, you can guarantee yourselves that they will recruit well at defensive end, they will recruit well at defensive tackle. And speaking of recruiting well at those positions, Ohio State is probably not done recruiting highly tout, um, touted pardon me, defensive linemen, whether edge rushers or interior players, because defensive line players Edric Houston and Dylan Stewart are crystal balled to Ohio State currently. Edric Houston plays on the interior, Dylan Stewart was an edge player who also at one point was being courted by Michigan, but now he's listed as warm and favoring the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State is a realistic shot of landing the number one recruiting class this cycle. They have a very good shot at doing that. When you have the highest quality class and you still have a ton of prospects on your board and several of them are crystal balled to you, and 24-7 Sports is a reliable website and resource for tracking recruiting and seeing what insiders think, you have a good chance. And this team is recruiting like they won a national title, like Noah Ruggles' field goal went through the uprights and then Ohio State blasted TCU instead of Georgia. That's how this team is recruiting. So there's a lot of optimism for Ohio State both in, in the near future, in the now, we talked about the quarterback battle just yesterday. I've talked about before the defense and how I think it's going to be elite. Same with the run game. And the immediate near future, Ohio State is still recruiting at that top three level. That level that gives you the best of the best chance to win it all. The level that Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State have been recruiting at and have basically been unanimously at that top three level for the past half a decade with Clemson and LSU occasionally coming in and out. Same with USC. Penn State and Michigan have touched the top five or top six maybe once over the past decade, but Ohio State's the only Big Ten team, really the only team north of the Mason-Dixon line that recruits at an elite level where you bring in players and you're certain to have a high level of players when they finish their eligibility, get drafted in the NFL and have great careers there. And that's thanks to elite coaches, Larry Johnson, Brian Hartline, Ryan Day, Tim Walton, Jim Knowles, guys who've even coached in the NFL, or in the case of Brian Hartline, they've played 
in the NFL for several years. And all in all, I look at this recruiting class, and I look at how Penn State and Michigan are doing. They're probably going to finish with top 15 classes. They still have more commits to add, especially the Michigan Wolverines, who I talked about earlier. I think they're going to have a, a huge recruiting class. And all in all, when you have six more five stars that are listed as warm toward your program, you're in a good position. There are some articles regarding Justin Scott that I'm going to link down below, one by On3, another by 24-7 Sports. The Buckeyes have several blue chippers in play as Ryan Day and the Big Ten program are hot on the trail. I'm going to read this article written by Steve Wiltfong, posted at the time of this recording just a little over 12 hours ago. Ohio State flexed its muscles on the recruiting trail Sunday, landing a commitment from Chicago St. Ignatius five-star defensive lineman Justin Scott, adding to a Buckeyes recruiting class ranked number two nationally. Ryan Day and his staff beat out Miami, Notre Dame, and Georgia, most importantly Michigan, for the number four defensive lineman and number 21 prospect overall, per 24-7 sports, not their composite ranking. As the cycle continues, the Buckeyes are a program that can make a run at the Bulldogs' number one class. The Big Ten program is trending on the 24-7 sports crystal ball for five-star edge Dylan Stewart. Number one safety KJ Bolden took a visit to Ohio State, and it seems like the Buckeyes and the Bulldogs are in the race for him. He's a player from Georgia, so landing him over the Bulldogs would be absolutely huge. Edric Houston, as I've mentioned before, is also crystal balled to Ohio State, and he's announcing his commitment on August 22nd. Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia are also competing for his services. Kobe Black, Brandon Baker, five stars. Baker's an offensive tackle. Black is a corner. They took official visits in June. And Aaron Scott, who's another highly ranked corner, a four-star from the state of Ohio, is committing July 30th. Michigan, Oregon, and Ohio State are the top three for Aaron Scott. Bryce West, of course, a cornerback who was being courted by both the Wolverines and the Buckeyes committed to Ohio State earlier in June. So there are more players that this article mentions too, but just to give you what Steve Wiltfong, who is one of the best of the best, is probably the best when it comes to recruiting analysis, what he thinks of Ohio State's class, just to give some perspective there. This class is impressive, and I like where it's going. And look, the direction of Ohio State football, losing to Michigan two years in a row and failing to capture the Big Ten or win a playoff game, especially last year, starting off 11-0 and ending 11-2 and is heartbreaking, but you have to keep perspective, and this program is still trending in the right direction. I don't think there's backsliding going on. If there was backsliding that was going on, I would have anticipated that last year could have ended much worse. You know, the 2019 team was the team that was probably the best team in the history of college football to not at least win to it not at least not win the national title. One of the best teams in college football to not win a national championship. They're certainly the best team of the college football playoff era to not win a playoff game. That's for sure. 2020, the team won a playoff game, but they were not at the same level as the 2019 team, and they lost in the national title to Alabama. The 2021 team was the worst team under Ryan Day. I think the 2022 team was better than the 2021 team, potentially better than even the 2020 team. So I don't think there's backsliding going on from just looking at how every year has played out for Ohio State and watching all the games and following them. And in the recruiting world, this will probably be Ohio State's best class since the 2021 class, which was up there among the greatest classes of all time. It was Ohio State's 2021 recruiting class that had Travion Henderson, Kyle McCord, Jack Sawyer, Donovan Jackson, GT Tuimolau, Emeka Igbuka, also Quinn Ewers, who's now the starting quarterback at Texas, really only stayed like half a year with the Buckeyes, but he still counts as a part of that 2021 recruiting class. All in all, you look at the direction that Ohio State is taking in terms of recruiting, 
They're not going anywhere, and they have great developers of talent on staff. Recruiting is the lifeblood of college football, and if you have great coaches and great recruiting, you're not going anywhere. The biggest question for Ohio State isn't if they will win the Big Ten, if they will capture a national title. It The question's more so when. When will Ohio State win the Big Ten, and when will they win a national title? And if they do, will they still be a second-tier program behind Michigan in the Big Ten. Because Georgia and Alabama, for example, those can be the top two programs in the country. And I'd say currently they are. I'd, I'd put Georgia at one and Alabama at two. But Alabama being number two nationally, they're number two in the SEC as well. And that's not going to make Nick Saban happy, and that's not going to make the Alabama fan base happy. Even more so for Ohio State if they're below Michigan. If Michigan and Ohio State are the number two programs at some point in the future, which is possible, if they're top two programs nationally, but Michigan's at one and Ohio State's at number two, that's not going to sit well with Ryan Day. And it's especially not going to sit well with the Ohio State fan base. So I don't think the extreme scrutiny or skepticism while a healthy amount of those things are good I don't think it has the correct perspective but Ohio State at some point has to beat Michigan if you're Ryan Day and they have to capture the Big Ten or a national championship and I think they will however recruiting at a high level like I mentioned earlier you have to have good coaching And coaching turnover happens, just like roster turnover. So Ohio State has to continue to hire good coaches, develop good coaches on staff, just like they do with their players, and they will be great. But so far for Ohio State, they look like they're going to build an elite recruiting class, and they could have the number one recruiting class of the 2024 cycle. That's all I have to say in this video about recruiting. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a video about Michigan's weaknesses. I have them as my number one team going 15-0, and I think they're going to be the best team in college football for 2023. But every team has weaknesses. Every team has at least a weakness of some kind. So I'm going to talk about Michigan's potential weaknesses for this coming season. If you want to get notified when I post that video in the morning on 2 Video Tuesday, make sure to like this video. Most importantly, hit the notification bell, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below, not just on the video about Michigan, but on this video. Where do you think Ohio State's recruiting class will finish in the rankings, and what additional five stars and four stars will they land? Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.